in my previous video where I demonstrated the parametric var and conditional var using the Gaussian distribution okay we use these formulas to calculate var and also conditional var if you would like to incorporate skewness and kurtosis into the estimation of var and conditional var then you can consider the cornish fischer expansion okay where we can actually incorporate skewness and excess kurtosis k here into calculating the standard normal variable so of course if uh, the, the formula for var and conditional var is still mainly based on the mean return plus the standard that normal variable uh, I'll denote it as W now okay multiply by the standard deviation and of course uh, the alpha or the significance level will determine the standard normal variable so we will first start off with the standard normal variable Z based on alpha and then after that the next three terms here will incorporate the skewness and also the excess kurtosis so excess kurtosis here is the kurtosis minus 3 so if let's say the distribution follows uh, let's say a normal distribution which means the skewness is zero and the excess kurtosis is zero then you will we will just fall back to the parametric var that is based on the gaussian distribution which is based on the previous uh, video for conditional var uh, we will use the same basis but the cumulant or the standard normal variable now will be based on the initial formula okay which is uh, one over alpha times one over square root of two pi times the exponential of negative half times the standard normal variable squared okay but then we will have to scale it based on the skewness as well as on the excess kurtosis so we'll now start to build this into the excel worksheet so i'll start by creating the header so we have the modified var and conditional var and this is for the cornish fisher expansion right so we will need the skewness and as well as the excess kurtosis so for skewness, you can just type uh, skew, okay, uh, skew function, and then we'll just select the rank return, or you can just enter L3 since we have already defined this. Okay, so this is the skewness of the distribution, which is positive. That means it's positively uh, skewed or skewed to the right. And then for excess kurtosis, you can just use cut, okay, and I'll just use this for L3. And that will be our excess kurtosis. Okay, so based, uh, just take note that this formula here is based on the sample excess ketosis, even though it's named Kurt, but it is the excess ketosis. Okay, you can check the documentation for more information on that. Now with that, we can proceed to calculate the VAR for based on the Cornish Fisher expansion. Okay, so we will first calculate what is the cumulant, okay, or what is the adjusted Z value. Okay, I'll not call it Z anymore. I'll call it. Uh, I'll give a lower case W. Okay, for for this, uh, for this particular formula. Okay, it is the equivalent of the Z, the lower case Z that we have here, except that this is adjusted for the skewness as well as the excess ketosis. So let's uh, begin. So we'll start off by uh, taking the previous number. So there'll be the Z value, the lower case Z. Okay, previously we are using 1%, so that's negative 2.232635. Okay, so I'll just start. Okay, so we'll add in uh, the O11, which is Z, okay, power 2, minus 1, and then we'll multiply it by the skewness, divide by 6, and then we'll add uh, the standard normal variable here. Okay, uh, then we will multiply by the Z square, minus 3. And then we'll multiply by the excess kurtosis over 24. Alright, and then uh, lastly, we'll minus the Z value. Multiply by 2 times the Z value square minus 5 times the skewness, which is squared, divide by 36. Okay, so we get a negative 3.5865. So you can see that after adjusting for skewness and kurtosis, the value of this standard normal variable, okay, the adjusted value will be higher in magnitude terms compared to the Z variable that is used for computing VAR assuming a normal distribution. Okay, so in other words, this will produce a larger amount of VAR okay, once we compute it. Now, of course, if skewness and kurtosis is equal to zero in this case, let me just force it to zero. Okay, it will just go back to the Z value, okay, which is assuming uh, no skewness. Skewness is equal to zero, which is for normal distribution. And excess ketosis is equal to zero, which also coincides with a normal distribution. 
Okay, so let me just undo that. Okay, right, so I'll proceed to calculate VAR. So VAR under a Cornish Fisher expansion will be based on uh, the negative of the mean return and then we'll just add the cumulant here get okay, a standard normal variable that we have adjusted multiply by the standard deviation okay and we get 9.266 percent okay which means that over a one day period there is a one percent probability that the loss okay in netflix uh, would exceed 9.266 percent Right, so now let's proceed to calculate uh, the conditional VAR. Okay, now I will need to adjust the upper Z, the uppercase Z value here. So I'll give it an upper, I'll call it uppercase W. All right, so we'll start by taking the uppercase Z value that we used for computing conditional VAR previously. And then I'll multiply that by the Z, uh, one plus the Z value, okay, for VAR, multiply by skewness over six. And then our plus 1 minus 2 times the z value squared. And then multiply by the skewness power of 2 over 36. Okay, and then plus negative 1 plus uh, z squared times the ketosis, excess ketosis over 24. And close bracket, right? And that's it. So we get negative 5.3465. Okay, and again, this number here is larger than what we obtained previously under the Gaussian distribution assumption. So let's compute the conditional VAR in this case. So conditional VAR here will be negative of the mean return plus the uppercase W, okay, and multiplied by the standard deviation. And let's convert this to a percentage, and this is 13.877%. So as I mentioned previously, okay, this is uh, when you interpret the number, this is telling us that over a one day period, there is a 1% probability that the loss in Netflix stock uh, can exceed 9.266%. And if that VAR is exceeded, okay, if we exceed the loss of 9.266%, then on the average, we will lose about 13.877%. Okay, that's how much more we can lose on the average if the VAR is exceeded. So, uh, of course, when we compare the results from the Gaussian distribution against the Cornish Fisher expansion, you will notice that the VAR and the conditional VAR values are both larger, okay, because it is incorporating the skewness and the excess ketosis. And for positive excess ketosis, this is showing or exhibiting a leptokinetic distribution, which means fat tails. Okay, so of course, when there are fatter tails, that means there are higher probabilities of extreme outcomes. Okay, so that's why there is a higher chance of, uh, there's a larger potential loss there.